he spent a lot of time this summer, and I know Dave told him at, at one time that uh, the vacations they were planning, you couldn't go during this part of this time, which occasionally for our tech people, they take some of that time off in the summer because we had so much going on with that. Secondly, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't acknowledge our board members that were here this morning. You had a chance to see them up front. We have Lisa Pieper, our board president, Steve Winter, one of our board members, and then the photographer, Doris Martin, who I think is probably around here somewhere. I appreciate them and the time they took out of their schedules to be here today, and I will tell you between the work of the Board of Education and our BEA, uh, we have a nice relationship. And I would tell you, while I would not want these two ladies to move off, uh, I also understand uh, that uh, you do that for a while and you look for new people to come on with that. I did mean what I said. I'm usually pretty easy to work with, I think. One of the things I looked at, just as an opportunity, uh, Carol and Joanne can vouch for that. And lastly, just before we get started here today, I want to just mention that uh, we didn't have major projects going on, and John always tells me that. This was a year where, you know, we didn't have anything huge, like the EFAS out front of the high school. Uh, but it gave us an opportunity, and our custodial staff and our maintenance staff, an opportunity to do a lot of work in the buildings. Uh, and I told this story a couple of different times, so if you've heard it before, I apologize. But I was walking into the high school uh, probably, oh, I'm going to say, three weeks ago now, and I'm walking in and I see the custodial staff with the uh, light fixtures down, dusting up in the light fixtures. I'm sorry, I don't even do that at home. So I watch that and I think, you know, what a good group, and they worked exceptionally hard with that, and I would tell you again, that would be a great group as you see them around in your building to thank them for their time and effort. These buildings don't clean themselves. And uh, they put a lot of time and effort in over the summer. And I know there's a, a lot going on. Uh, as a word of encouragement, a couple of things that happened this summer that uh, when you get a chance, uh, if you haven't seen already, the auxiliary gym at the high school was painted. Looks great, by the way. I love the orange stripe around it. Uh, also, uh, through a, a very generous donation, uh, you'll notice out at the House of Orange, uh, we now have a sign out there that was donated. So uh, we are extremely pleased with, with what went on this summer. I don't get this opportunity very often. Where we're all together, I get an opportunity to discuss some things with you about my feelings, where I'm at with some things, hopefully give you something, and isn't a waste of your time. Because your time is valuable and I understand that. So I started to go back and look at um, just some books that have meant a lot to me over the years and, and looking at some of the things. First one I looked at was Under Resourced Learners by Ruby Payne. Heard Ruby Payne here, some of you did here recently with that. She talks about building relationships of mutual respect and teaching appropriate behavior. One of my favorite, all-time favorite, um, love John Maxwell and developing the leader within you. In this book, he talks a lot about priorities, integrity, creating a positive, creating positive change, and developing people. Excellent book by Todd Whitaker of What Great Teachers Do Differently. In that book, he talks about it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Talks about the power of expectations, prevention versus revenge, and who is the variable in the classroom. Another one of my favorites, Leaders of Learning uh, by DeFore Morzano, great book. In there, they talk about school improvement means people improvement, creating a collaborative culture of a PLC, a guaranteed and viable curriculum, monitoring student learning, 
effective instruction, and what to do when kids don't learn. I looked at all those books and I thought, holy cow, you could, we could talk days on those. And I uh, felt like they were all good books, something I could look at, could use. Uh, but I did take a different book that also means a lot to me. And the author is Sharon Creech. Raise your hand if you know that author. Thank you. With that, the book I chose dealing with, uh, that Sharon Creech wrote, dealt with schools and dealt with how a group works together. In the synopsis, what it kind of comes down to is you had a building administrator watching everything that went on in school, all the good things that staff and students were doing, and make some choices as they looked at that of going, okay, how do we improve? How do we get better? And part of that was, how to, if, if a little is good, more is better. And through that, what they started to find was that that's not quite how it worked. And through some mentoring and people talking and working with the administrator, they made some changes to that. So the book I'm using today is A Fine, Fine School by Sharon Creech. And I do think there's some, it has some tie-ins today with what we're doing. We're going to talk today about being the best in the nation, or among the best in the nation. The best districts align curriculum with instructional practice. Folks, we do that. Our curriculum work that we've been doing over the past few years aligns to state and national standards. Our work that we've been looking at and our instructional model dealing with Marzano's and ties to that. The best districts work to build strong relationships with children and families. I don't have to tell you that. You do that all the time in your buildings. I will tell you that as a district, when we started to look at, and I think, uh, again, middle school, high school in particular, did some work on reflective teaching and the 41 elements that Marzano put out. When we looked at that administratively about what is important to us, that's a cornerstone to what we do. The, the relationships you build with families and children is critical to our success as a district, and you do a very good job with that. The best districts differentiate instructions to provide multiple opportunities for learning. We do that. We have work going on in the buildings, looking at reteaching, looking at changing schedules to adjust those opportunities. And the work we do in the PLC ties that all together. The best districts understand that learning is a function of time and make opportunities to extend learning for students. We're doing this. In the book, they took that to an extreme. And just so there's that I make this very clear. The person, the gentleman standing there, in no way looks like me. So. <laughs> but what we do with a function of time, things we've done is we have adjusted schedules for kids. We have summer school and we have tutoring. The best districts expect and teach acceptable behavior. We do that whether it's through our Boys Town training or whether it's through activities to recognize positive student behavior. The best districts use frequent multiple assessments to inform instructions. Again, we do that, whether it's through the Nebraska Statewide Assessment That'd be NISA, whether it's through the measures of academic progress, maps, 
whether it's through common formative assessments, CFAs, whether it's through the work you do in your classrooms with tests and quizzes, or whether it's through the PLC work that's done. The best districts understand that school improvement is a continuous process, not a one-time event. We know that. Whether it's through the strategic plan that's been guiding us over the last four years of where we're headed, whether it's uh, about school improvement plans or district improvement plan, we have a plan and process in place to move forward, and we update it consistently and often. The best districts realize that focused and ongoing staff development greatly impacts teacher expertise and therefore student learning. We know that. We do that. I'm going to put a little bit of a plug in now for our PLC work because I've had people ask me before, Pat, what do you think about PLC? Probably the most critical and important driver for us as a district. I am a firm believer in the PLC process and what it brings. And the reason I feel so strongly about that is it puts staff in charge of their professional development. If we're focused on the right four questions, what are students supposed to know? How do we know if they know it? What do we do if they already know it? What do we do if they don't learn it? Sounds pretty simple, but as you've worked in your PLCs with that, you've noticed that sounds simple, but you can get into a lot of detail with that. That should be what's driving us. That should be what's driving our PLC process. And I think long term, our expectations are, as PLCs, you should be coming to your building administrator, to our curriculum person, and say, here's what we know. Here's what we've tried. We're not getting the results we need, or we are getting, but if you aren't, how can you help us? How do we work together to make sure that all kids are successful? We have an instructional model. We're using uh, Marzano's work. We have a common instructional language that we're starting on. And we're refining our focus year to year. The best districts provide support for students who don't learn it the first time or the first way it's presented. We do this. We use reteaching. We have classroom interventions. We have special programs that allow for that. We adjust schedules and we use response to intervention. The best districts realize that learning has to be relevant to students. We know this. Our work with career academies, school to work, classroom instructional practice that ties uh, common everyday things to what students are learning on, and also our work by and the work we've done with Ruby Payne. The best districts use research-based instructional practices and use data effectively. We do this. Whether it's Marzano's work, Ruby Payne's work, the data notebook we've developed and you'll be using this year, or our data retreats. We do a lot in this area. The best districts use developmentally appropriate practices. We do this, whether it's through our pre-K classroom and the work done there. We talk about that through our PLC time, and also when we do curriculum and instructional work. I hope our kids don't look like the ones over there. <laughs> the best districts 
realize that building relationship and personalizing instruction are critical to the teaching learning process. We know this. Talked a little bit as when we looked at the reflective teacher and looked at the 41 elements as a uh, administrative team, and we said, out of all 41, what's the most critical? And pretty much without exception, it all dealt with relationships and how we interact with people, whether it be parents, whether it be as staff members, whether it be with students. We're going to continue to function among the best in the nation. First off, we realize everything isn't perfect, that we have work to do, and we have room to get better. Folks, every district does. The goal isn't perfection. The goal is to consistently reach for the better. Our goal has to be how do we improve today? How do we improve this week? How do we improve this quarter? How do we improve this year? The other part of that is our goal has to be focused on how do we take responsibility for what we can control? And we have to stop there and that has to be part of our focus. It has to be what it can we can control with that. There, they look happy. I hope that you see through the slides that we, that I just went through today, that Beatrice Public Schools has things in place to be among the best in the nation. I hope you understand that my feeling, our administrative team feeling, the board's feeling is, we have the people in place you to make this happen. I hope you also saw that we are, there is a plan. This isn't happenstance. This isn't whatever tickles our fancy this time. But we have a plan and a process in place, and we're going to follow it. We have to be patient. We have to be consistent on following through with our plan. And our goal is to let go of the good to grab the better. I told you one of my favorite books, showed it to you before, is a John Maxwell book. I read the following quote from him today uh, as I was looking through that. And I thought, I really need to share that with you about success. Success can be defined as the progress, because it's a definition of aggressive realization of a predetermined goal. Let's say that again. The, success, the progressive realization of a predetermined goal. Folks, we are successful. We have a goal. We're getting better. We need to just continue down that path. And then to finish, as Sharon Creech would, we have a fine, fine school. We have great people. They do a super job. I thank you for your time this morning, and I want you to have a successful year. Thank you.